and it's sort of a fairy tale it's like a second honeymoon and I think uh, it's a very just move by Edberg to bring him back into his camp sort of as the last hurrah but as you can see players are walking out on court and what we hope will be another classic we just had one Sam Praz against Karecha if we had another one tonight it would be uh, some day stroke evening session all right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's Edberg versus Ivanisevic. Stay with us. It's about giving the best coverage. Sunderland make their debut appearance on Ford Super Sunday. It's about being there. Against West Ham United's new look multinational side. Talent. Scores! Commitment. Julian Dick. Genius. Raducayo. Football. Yes. Scoring goals. Winning. It's about Sunderland v West Ham Sunday at three on Sky Sports One. Just part of a great lineup of football this weekend. just about to start their warm-up in this last quarter-final clash of the 1996 US Open. Let me just uh, bring you up to date with the, the semi-final lineup so far. Last night, Andre Agassi really crushed Thomas Muster. Yes, it was four sets, but Agassi was supreme. And also Michael Chang yesterday defeated Javier Sanchez in again in four sets. A now slight struggle for the number two seed Chang, but he came through it pretty well. So it's Agassi Chang in the bottom half. And then just as I just told you, Sampras has come through to the semi-finals. And we hope that we fit again to play uh, with a day's rest. But he'll play the winner of this match, Edberg Ivanisvic. He's a member of the Swedish Davis Cup and Olympic teams. Yes, it's rather appropriate that uh, in the bottom half you should uh, have an American in the final, I suppose, this being their national championship. But, of course, the point is that it's the Europeans who've dominated the Grand Slams. American hasn't won a Grand Slam tournament this year. You've had Becker and you've had uh, Kafelnikov and Krychek. And thus, I think, is that extra determination because uh, these are the events, these majors, the players who've won other tournaments and all these guys have. These are the ones they want to win because they know they'll be remembered by their majors. It's one of the reasons why Goran has, has not really won, hasn't won a Grand Slam. He's been close to the uh, final of Wimbledon uh, a couple of times. Is it just pure mental capability of this man? He, he can't really concentrate fully for the full two weeks? I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, seven matches, even Kapelnikov uh, last year was saying that he doubted that for some time he could win seven matches it came Goran sooner perhaps than he thought and on a surface Croatia. incidentally that he didn't think he now could do it on either so who Carlo. knows there could be a shock for even his his but i think that is uh, chiefly his problem just that lack of concentration that uh, tendency to look for things other than himself to blame uh, plus of course he, he doesn't have the consistency off the ground that uh, some of the other players have he developed that earlier this year he also developed much more of a serve volley game which i think is very important because Croatian people Davis like Cup Paul Haas used to say that uh, they knew that once they got uh, even Isovic to serve back as the, one of the best serves if not the best serve in the game they were in the point because he never took advantage of it by serve volley and if Stefan Edberg did go out tonight it would be uh, the end uh, the end of an era really wouldn't it the end of the the real true serve and volley up well, it would be the end, I think, of just a, a most phenomenal career, a consistent career, virtually unbroken, well, certainly unbroken for 54 Grand Slams. And I think uh, the end of uh, a style that, to me, covers all eras. I think there were people like Edberg playing in the 80s, there were people like Edberg playing in the 70s, 60s, all the way back. There have been a great players covering the court as Edberg does, unlike many of today's players who are very much baseline dominated, who seem a little unhappy in midcourt they don't have his agility they don't have his dexterity 
And uh, to me, it, it would be a, a great premature loss because, I mean, look at him. He's here and playing well. And only 30. A lot of people think that he shouldn't stop. But uh, he's made up his mind. He wants out. Uh, and that's the way it's going to be. This man, Goran Ivanisevic, 24 years of age, ranked six in the world. That run you see early on in the year, Dubai, Milan and Rotterdam, I, really, I picked him after that to win Wimbledon. I really thought he was starting to win a lot of matches. He was looking good and his mind was good. And then he just fell off a bit and, and obviously didn't achieve the one goal I think he really wants to achieve. And that's the Wimbledon crown. Yes, I think he's, he's always figured, having reached the final there, that uh, he can do it, and he's more likely to do it at Wimbledon than, than anywhere else. He feels he can play on clay, and he's in the past always felt that he can do better on clay than he can on these hard courts. But of course, getting to the final at Key Biscayne this year, a, uh, a, an end result, of course, which was never culminated because uh, he had to withdraw, has meant and taught him uh, that he feels now that perhaps he can actually do better on hard courts, this type of court, a cement type court, than he can even on clay. Okay, through if, if Edberg's going to win tonight, what, what's he going to have to do well? All about the serve and, and the first volley for him? I think volleying's going to be paramount because uh, Edberg's going to be coming in a lot uh, on Ivanisevic. And Ivanisevic, of course, is going to tee off on his uh, passing shots. There will not, I don't think, be too many lobs from Ivanisevic, which, of course, would be a good thing because it, uh, Edberg's not the greatest smasher in the game. And uh, consequently, it's a matter of picking up the Ivanisevic passing shots early. And we noticed the other night against uh, Bernd Karbacher that uh, in the first set, Edberg uh, was a little at sea here at night. Just uh, looking at that head-to-head, -head, uh, Edberg leads Ivanisevic 9-8. Edberg has actually won the last three encounters, which could be quite significant tonight. 96 in Rome on the clay, and then 96 at Queen's, and then back in 1994 at the ATP Finals on carpet. Edberg's only dropped one set in those three meetings. So, I don't know who to pick through. Who are you going for? Well, I think I might pick Edberg. He okay. did win the spin of the coin, and as he's been doing, he elected to receive... Yes. So then Goran Ivanisevic to open up the last of our quarter-final matches here at Thank Flushing you, Meadow. Well, he's obviously looking to come in against Edberg quite a bit more than uh, he might normally do, even Isovich. I think we're going to see quite a few of those tonight from even Isovich. 133 miles per hour. That's his 73rd ace in total so far at this tournament and his first ace tonight.
Ivanisevic takes the first game. If your hands off the bone and your tomatoes homegrown, don't cut corners with your roll. Make sure it's a Hovis cobble. Yes, it's white. Yes, it's Hovis. And yes, I know it's rude to speak with your mouth full. Morning. Morning, Dad. Oh, yeah. I must sort out that loan. But I can't get to the bank. Hello! There's a new convenient way to get an unsecured personal loan. Call Lombard Direct, free on 0800 2 15,000. 24 hours a day. We have loans from 800 to 15,000 pounds for almost anything, and our rates are low. One call to Lombard Direct, and you're laughing. To arrange a loan or for more information, call free on 0800 2 15,000. So Goran Ivanisevic holds his opening service game very comfortably. And once again, it's a packed stadium court tonight. And you'd have to say, as Fru McMillan was saying earlier, that 99% of the crowd are going to be Stephen for this Edmund man, Stefan Edberg, playing in his last US Open. Love one. That's so awesome. Thank you, no flashlight photography. Lost uh, two serves uh, against Tim Henman in his previous round. Oh. Well, should have lost more because uh, Henman had nine breaks, nine break points on Edberg in the second set. What an important second set that was. That's it. <laughs> Some stretch from Edberg on that first volley. Well, this is where his dexterity comes into view here, Edberg, because uh, most people would have been expecting a backhand, but he has that ability to switch so quickly. What the players call hand, you can see him quickly from backhand to forehand. Edberg holds his opening game to love. One on. A certain amount of settling down going on out there at the moment. It can't have been easy for these players. They were scheduled originally for 7.30 and they come out about an hour and a half later. And it's sort of a fairy tale. It's like a second honeymoon. And I think uh, it's a very just move by Edberg to bring him back into his camp, sort of as the last hurrah. But as you can see, players are walking out on court in what we hope will be another classic. We just had one, Sam Praz against Karecha. If we had another one tonight, it would be open. Let me just uh, bring you up to date with the, the semi final lineup so far. Last night, Andre Agassi really crushed Thomas Muster yes it was four sets but Agassi was supreme and also Michael Chang yesterday defeated Stephane Javier Edberg Sanchez in again in four sets a now slight struggle for London, number two England. seed Chang but he came through it pretty well so it's Agassi Chang in the bottom half 
And then it's just as I just told you. So Commitment. Julian Dick. Genius. Radicoyo. Football. Yeah. Scoring goals. Winning. It's about Sunderland v West Ham Sunday at three on Sky Sports One. Just part of a great lineup of football this weekend. Players are just about to start their warm-up in this last quarter-final clash of the 1996 USA some day stroke evening session. Right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's Edberg versus Ivanisevic. Stay with us. It's about giving the best coverage. Sunderland make their debut appearance on Ford Super Sunday. It's about being there. Against West Ham United's new look multinational side. Talent. 